So now we want to customize our login and registration pages. However, these pages are currently abstracted away. So we'll need to scaffold these pages out before we can ever make any changes to them. So for this, just go ahead and right click on your project, go to add, and then just select new scaffolded item. Make sure that you have identity selected and click add. So here we only need to select the ones that we're concerned with, which in our case will be the account slash login and account slash register pages. In addition to that, we'll also need to select our data context class, which will be the application DB context from the data project. So when it's done, it will create a readme text file. That's something we don't really need, so feel free to delete it. So it probably won't be obvious to you right away, but it did end up creating some pages for us. And to find those, you can go into your areas, identity, pages, and account. And here's where we will find the login and register pages. So we're going to start with our register page. Uh, we would like to add a couple of things. I'm going to add in a first name and last name for the application user and probably remove a couple things. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove this email confirmation and the email sender as I'm not going to use it. It's something I just don't really want to mess with in this project. So let's go ahead and start pulling that code out. Okay, so here we won't need this if statement because we're not confirming our account. Um, but we do want to go ahead and sign the user in and then uh, relocate or redirect the user. So go ahead, copy that, and paste it in here. So we also won't need this external login in here, so go ahead and take out that line. Since we're no longer using the email sender, we can go ahead and remove it from our dependency injection. So now we can just add in our first and last name properties to our input model. We'll just select and copy this email property, paste it in down here. We do not need this email address attribute. We'll rename it to first name. We'll rename the property to first name as well. And then we'll just copy and repeat this with last name. Now we'll just scroll on down to our application user and we will set the first name and last name for our model. Since we're no longer doing the email confirmation, we will have to change a configuration within our app services. So find your add default identity and we are going to change this required confirmed account and set it to false. So taking a look at the register page, I see a few things that I do want to change. One of which is the navigation. We won't need this home or privacy button. And in fact, we won't want the login or register buttons either. 
So in the main view, we do have two columns. On the left side, we have our existing form. Um, on the right side, we have this useless content that I do plan on replacing with the first name and last name properties that we gave to our user. So in our register view, we're going to go ahead and take this form, take the first line of it, and pop it up top. Take the bottom line of it and put it at the bottom. All right. And just let's go back to our page, make sure everything looks the same. Refresh. Okay, it looks exactly the same. So back in our register view, let's just grab one of these form groups, copy it, and replace all of this with that code. And then we'll change the input to input.firstName. We'll also change our header up here to something else. Who are you? And let's copy this form group, paste it down here, and do the same for last name. So let's refresh and see the change. First name, last name. So if we were to click register, we see all these errors um, letting us know, hey, this field's required. So um, that's good to have. However, I do not like this overall because it pushes our form down. So I'm going to change that. And that's this guy here. So just remove that and refresh, try it again, and it's nice and clean. So the identity pages use a different layout, and to find out what it is, you can look at your view start, and that tells you where that layout is, and in our case, it's just a layout inside the shared folder. So let's go over there. Um, if you remember, we copied it over and moved it into home, so that's what the home page is looking at. We're going to look at the shared layout. All right, so looking through this, we can see that um, the home and privacy buttons are in there. We can just remove them, and we're using this login partial, which we're just going to completely remove because we don't want it. We're also going to rename our layout to identity layout. Okay, and because we changed the name here. Remember, we'll have to go to our view start and change the name there. Okay, so let's go ahead and start it up and see what we got. Okay, so it looks like uh, the nav bar up top is nice and clean. We click it, it works. Um, Jump back in here, everything looks fine. Check out the login page. Okay, so we'll want to remove this column. Check out, forgot, register. Looks fine. So let's actually register. Just type in your email address, some passwords, and your first and last name. Okay. Click register. Okay. Uh, cool. So let's look. Okay. So looks like our nav bar, once we're registered in, we're seeing our email address, I want that to be name, and our logout looks 
strange. So let's fix that. So go ahead and navigate to your login partial. Okay, so looking at identity name, we'll see, um, okay, so that's where the email's coming in. And if you remember, looking at the uh, register code behind, we'll see that name comes from the email right there. So username and email matches up. So that's where that email's coming from. We want it to be first name. So the, the way to do this, go ahead and remove that. We're going to throw in parentheses. Okay. And then inside of those parentheses, right in the middle here, put another set of parentheses and type in await. And we're going to use this user manager up here. Uh, to get our first name. So type in user manager dot and then we're going to do the get user async and then we need to pass in our claims principle which is automatically included um, inside of this view as a user. So go ahead and grab that and put it right in there. Now finally on the, we'll have to put one, our closing parenthesis, and then we can put dot first name. All right, and that should give us our name. Let's try it out. All right. Success. Hello, Daniel. Okay, so the best way uh, I found to fix this logout button, we will just copy this link and put it in place of this form. We'll make it so that the link ends up calling this form. Um, that way we don't have to worry about the styling of the form and the button. So. Uh, create the link with the class nav link. Inside, we'll put logout. And then we're going to put the on click method. We're going to use uh, JavaScript and jQuery. So it'll just be this and then dot submit. And then we're going to give our form a name. We'll call it logout form. Whoops, ID equals logout form. And then just copy that on over. Put it in here and make sure you throw the pound key. And refresh. And now we see the logout button. We also have the form logout button. We'll get rid of that, but for now, we have our logout, it works. So let's log in. Okay, so to get rid of the logout button, let's just remove this button from inside the form. Perfect, try it out. And success, it's gone. Okay, log in. All right, so let's use a, I'd like to have a pointer for when we hover over logout. So throw in style equals cursor and pointer. Save it and let's check it out. Everything looks great. All right, so think the last thing I would like to do is check out the some of these pages here so I don't want this right column in the login page uh, no need to have that so we can go ahead and remove it go to our login page 
and we can just kill this entire column because we don't want it at all. I'm going to save it. And refresh, and looks good to me. Okay. The last thing we'll want to do is commit and push our changes out to our repo. So instead of having to click this button, you can also go through your Team Explorer. And then you can just hit Changes. And then we can just type in the message we want. Which we did, we scaffolded identity. And customized login and registration pages. Okay, and instead of having to do two separate actions like commit and then push, you can just go ahead and select this drop down and choose commit all and push. And that's all there is to it.